Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here at IRI with Team 2539, the Krypton Cougars, coming out of the FMA District. This team has two district wins under their belt this season. Beautiful Machine has everything it needs to compete at the highest level of crescendo. Here with me, I have Isaac, Ian, Quinn, and Alex to dive into this machine on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Isaac, why don't you get us started with some of the drivetrain features you have on your robot? So we have Mark IV SDS Swerve that we can change in about five minutes due to the way that we have it laid out on here with these bolts. And what gear ratio are you guys using? We're using L2s because of the better acceleration that it provides when you first start driving. Thank you, Isaac. And uh, why don't you uh, talk us through the note path um, of your robot. How does, where does the note go? How do you actually intake it and score it? Oh yeah, so we start with an under the, in, under the bumper intake uh, towards the back. And it, we use belts to allow our shooter to adjust so that the intake stays, or the note stays in the same spot. And then we come to the shooter where it, uh, we used a double side, double wheel to shoot because the single wheel testing didn't go as well as we expected it to. And so we decided that the double wheeled shooter would be better. Could you actually walk us through maybe a demo of actually putting a note oh, through yeah, the robot? Oh yeah, All right, so it's gonna start with a click of a button to get it into the uh, actual intake and it's gonna go to our transport. And then after we click another button, it'll rev up the shooter and then we'll hit one more button and it'll fire it. Thank you for that demo. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about, so you have, your shooter design here, you have the, these gears. How do you actually mechanically control your shooter in the position? All right, so we have uh, gears down below with motors that uh, turn the, the shooter to move it down with these, uh, with these gears and it pushes it down so that the shooter can have a better angle lower. Thank you very much. Quinn, can you tell us a little bit more about your pretty unique trap mechanism? 100% accurate I hear at, the, at IRI thus far. You have yep. your own intake and everything for just the trap. Tell me a little bit more yep. about it. So far in the competition we've seen 100% accuracy. Uh, each time we've attempted the trap we've made it in and that is due to our very successful design. It's remained the same since week three when we designed it and it actually replaced a prior trap mechanism because for week one, we had a trap mechanism based off the EveryBot design. However, we found that that was not functioning as well as we wanted it to. So we did a redesign for a week three event at Springside Chestnut Hill, and we found this design to work very well. With it, we're using three rollers, each of which are going to use a super grippy substance. So when we have a note in the robot, it does not escape, even just a little bit in, see how difficult it is to get that note out of the robot. So due to that, we can run underneath the stage, we can hit the note on the stage, and it never comes out of the robot until we really want it to. In addition, we're using a nice elevator mechanism, which we haven't seen anywhere else before, and it's using a sprocket to run a set of holes along our one by one tubing. And with that sprocket design, we've had that all year, it hasn't worn too much. It's run very smooth the entire way up and down and it allowed us to place a swappable mechanism on the very top. So we have some 8020 running across the very top, which our original mechanism was just on a bar of 8020 in the center, and we were able to quickly swap that out for this new mechanism on the 8020. So that was really a great feature of our trap mechanism, was the ability to swap that out for a new mechanism or replace it if we break it by hitting it anywhere. Thank you, Quinn. Can you tell me a little bit more about your actual climber on the front of the robot here? I see you have multiple hooks. Can you yes. explain that? Our climber this year, we tried to keep it simple. Since we already knew how to do climbers, we wanted to go with a more simplistic design. So we're simply running chains with hooks on top of them. It's a chain that's driven by a motor with a hook on it, that's it. 
So because we knew how to do climbers, we wanted to keep it lightweight, small, and not spend too much time innovating on it. So we had time to do other stuff such as trap and our shooter. And on this climber, we have hooks, which are all specially uh, designed. The front bottom two hooks each have a slight angle on them, and that'll allow us to grab down on the chain and capture that chain up into our hooks a lot better. And inside of those hooks, we also have the correct width to be the width of a chain. And with that width of a chain, it allows us to not slip side to side, whether we're climbing on a higher part of the chain or lower. And then we also have a third hook in the center. And that third hook in the center allows us to do a much quicker climb. And we can do that quicker climb whenever we're in a playoffs or another match where we're not trapping because we don't need to get quite as high to reach the trap. Thank you, Quinn. Very interesting stuff. Alex, why don't you wrap us up with some of the programming that makes this bot really perform at the highest level that it does? Uh, yeah, well, a lot of our programming is using vision. So for our intake, we use limelights and we can see the notes and we use that to help auto intake. We also use limelights to see April tags. We see them on the speaker and that's what helps us make an interpolating map and it'll adjust our shot for wherever we are. Our LEDs can tell our human players a lot about what we need. We can flash the lights to see the two different types of intakes. So shown was, shown was our trap intake and that's flashing them red and green. And for a ground intake, we flash them purple. We can also use our lights to see when we have a note in our intake and they'll flash white when we have a note. Well, thank you very much, Alex and the Krypton Cougars. Thank you for taking the time to dive into your robot behind the bumpers. Amazing machine this year. Can't wait to see you guys perform the rest of the weekend here at IRI, as well as in future seasons. My name is James with First Updates Now. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.